Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Let's just jump straight two-footed into this. Now, in the last episode, we had a couple of pretty damn excellent victories. Games that we pretty much had to win uh, against poor sides in the league, and we demolished them, uh, putting seven goals past the tour with them without conceding. And I really hoped that our run would continue after that into our next three home games in a row. And it kind of did, um, but more on that in a minute. First thing to note is that Stephen Gardner was actually called up for the Northern Ireland under-19s, which to me is a massive deal for him. And it really does show that people are starting to recognise his ability outside of uh, just the Danish second tier, because I don't think Brendan ever got called up. Um, so it's really cool to see that Stephen Gardner's flourishing at this team. Now, first up, we're at home to Shellaroop, who admittedly have started the season pretty damn well for a newly promoted club, uh, but we did smash five goals past them earlier in the year. So I was fairly confident going into this one. And we were 2-0 up inside five minutes with Steven Gardner and then Mariano Bravo making it 2-0. We were 3-0 up inside the half an hour mark, and it was pretty much plain sailing from there, or, or so I thought. Um, they did get one back from Kitten, which I was, at, not Kitten, Clitten, which was a bit disappointing. And another one back through Yannick Agger. We took our foot off the gas a little bit. I, I wasn't trying to. The team just sort of did. They dropped the concentration levels and let route back into the game. Thankfully, we got away with the result. Um, St. Brendan, though, did sprain ankle ligaments, uh, which is bad, and he has now missed every he's missed the last three matches as a result of that, which was not ideal. And I think he'll probably miss today's first game as well, maybe even the second one, but not ideal. In the next game, we were forced massively uh, to rotate, and this is probably the least 4 0 game I've ever seen in my life. Uh, to be perfectly honest. Yes, we created better chances than Helsingor, but look at this. We only had four shots on target, and we scored all four of the damn things. Mariano Bravo with the hat trick, so he's got. I think he's on to nine goals for us already. Um, the lad is an absolute talent, and the longer we can hang on to this guy, the better. Hopefully, the fairly loyal aspect of his personality might lean in towards that. But, I mean, we had to start with Neil Hutchinson and Nicholas Vera in this game. Vera actually got an assist. Sorry, he got three assists in this match too. So he's looking like a very good player out on that right-hand side. And I think the reason is because he's very right-footed, but also he's got that eight crossing, which seems to be helping him pick out passes for people, particularly Bravo, who is just... He's just on fire. A uh, very, very good win. Didn't deserve to be as, as emphatic as 4 0, though. Next up, we had the final one of our little run of home games. And this game was absolute banter, to be perfectly honest. Um, we went in front early on through Aldo Safi from a set piece, which was great to see us scoring one. Before half time, Stephen Gardner made it two, and I thought, perfect. We were having chance after chance, and it looked like we were going to go on run away with this and get three or four goals. Unfortunately, straight after half time, Andreas Skovgor with a goal from a corner. It's the first one we've conceded from a corner in a very long time. Uh, it was just very frustrating, particularly with what was to come, uh, and that was a Fabian Muscuzza own goal. Ball crossed in, hits Muscuzza, and goes into the back of the net. Absolute banter. Very, very annoying, because um, I really wanted to get that fifth win in a row and really try and put that gap between us, and I think this run really affected morale or it certainly seemed to going into the next match. Next up, we travelled away to Viborg. Unfortunately, they weren't quite the same team that they were back in the day. They have a new manager, new things going, and they also have Thomas Afori. Remember him? He is now apparently white again and on loan from Norgeland, I guess. Let's actually check this. I don't know if he is or not. Is he still on loan from someone? Yeah, he is still on loan from Norgeland. Um, He did well for us in his short spell here, and he's been doing well for Viborg. He got the ball on the right-hand side, ran from the wing, past three of our defenders, and slotted it in the bottom corner. He ran through our entire defence. Very, very disappointed in that. And the pen from Jakob Vetter, uh, making it 2-0 and first half stoppage time we probably could have still had something from this game but maybe i don't know i think the confidence took a hit after conceding those goals against odent nicholas vera did get one back for us but it wasn't enough in the end injuries have kind of hit us a bit but i don't know it's not the end of the world i guess it just would have been nice to win those that home game against odent was so important and we just couldn't do it cross completion still good against people though and that leaves us looking like this now it started to get very very dicey at the top. It's a three-horse race for the title now. Uh, Odense and Freymad have really dropped off. Despite Odense taking those points against us, they are now 10 points behind us, and Freymad are seven. Not completely out of the woods, but seven games off the pace with eight matches to go is, is a long way to catch up. It's between us, Roskilde, and Hobro at the moment. Roskilde, despite us winning four in a row and taking 13 points from five games, Roskilde have just been there with us every step of the way, and I think they might have finally found their form. And I honestly just don't know if we're going to have the strength and willing mentality to be able to get this one over the line in the end. They are starting to look like an absolute juggernaut. Um, now, I did say that the best I really wanted to try and achieve this year was to get one of those promotion playoffs. But the problem with that is it does mean we have to play aside from the Super League. However, that could be a pretty rubbish team. They could be worse off than Roskilde. It might even be, well, not easier for us, um, but it might not be so difficult to actually go up through the playoffs. It's just, I'm trying to set you up here for disappointment in case we mess this up over the next eight games. Um, I think it'd be incredibly difficult to mess it up to the point where we fell out of the playoffs, to be perfectly honest. So I think that's not in the bag, 
touch wood. But uh, it's certainly getting close to that so far. But we do need to keep pushing for the title because it's going to be a hell of a run in. Now, we've played Marion at least 11 times and they've actually got a damn good record against us, to be fair. Uh, we, we've played them just so many times. We've beaten them once at home. In fact, I don't think we've ever beaten Marion Leafs on the road. In fact, have we ever even got a draw against them? We've lost every single game against Marion Leafs on the road that we've ever played against them, which is not boding well, despite the fact they are struggling, but they have changed their manager, which makes me worry that the tactic is going to be different and that we might get buggered again by them. Uh, but hey, what can you do? We've got to try our best. So for today's game, pretty much going to go with the standard sort of lineup. Gardner, Bravo, Vera on the right because Brendan is still out injured. Uh, Muscutsa on the right wing back uh, and Carl Rogers Jr. on the left. Shizzy and Anor in the middle with Roland, Augustin and Perez at the back, I think, because we've... Oh no, safety's back now. Okay, good. Unfortunately, I made the slight mistake of setting a couple of players that I shouldn't have available for an under-19s game today because I didn't realise they were on the same day. Uh, silly of me, I'm aware, but we just have to make do with it. Safey is going to come in for Roland because he's just a really good player. Um, although Augustine's form has started to drop off a little bit and Perez and particularly Aldo Safey have certainly been performing very well so far. So we do need to keep an eye on Augustine and make sure that he doesn't drop off the pace because, I mean, is he still improving? He's got that fairly professional personality, but he's, he just seems to have been sort of stuttering a little bit at the moment. We do need to see a little bit more out of him and hopefully uh, we can achieve that. On the bench, Sivertsen, uh, because apparently all of our other goalkeepers are available uh, and we've sent, um, oh God, Kovacic out on loan uh, back to Canada for a bit just to get him some game time. Roland uh, Pamic, who is one of the Croatian youngsters. Uh, Brendan on the bench, maybe to come on. Ingolfsson and Neil Hutchinson. This, the bench isn't quite as strong today as I would have liked because of the injuries, um, but I, I don't know. I, I think we should still be okay. I realized I didn't have a seventh sub. We're going to put Jose Manuel. He's a young Spaniard. He's already leaving the club because uh, he just isn't going to fit in the team. He's a right back and a defensive one at that. So yeah. Now then, they are actually still playing the same system they played under their old manager. And that's that Skeetle guy I was talking about that we completely destroyed when we played them last. So same tactic as last time. Everybody mark the crap out of that fella and see how it goes. So question of the day. And today's question is this, a simple one. Who do you think are going to win the playoffs? Um, I've including all the leagues here. So, you know, championship, league one, league two and whatnot. Um, I don't actually know who's in the league two playoff. I know Exeter got through last night, but I actually don't know who the other team is. Um, so I'm going to say Exeter for that one. Shrewsbury Rotherham, I think is the other one. So I'm going to, oh, hello. Gardner's already through him behind. Can Stephen Gardner score? No, he can't. That should have been 1-0 inside 30 seconds. I think Shrewsbury might do it, you know. And as for the championship one, I'm a Fulham fan, so I have to say Fulham. And I think on paper, we should win. But that doesn't mean we will, because it's Fulham, for crying out loud. Anyway, who do you think are going to win the playoffs? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD Gardner. Seth Anor. Oh, over the bar. We have started here like a bat out of hell. Chances galore in the first three minutes of this match. We've got to keep an eye on the Roskilde and Hobro scores as well. Because if we can pull off a big win today away at Marion Lees, which you think we should... My God, the space they're giving us in behind. Bravo's through. Bravo's through. And it's another amazing save from the uh, Marion Lees goalkeeper. He's keeping them in the game so far. Ball up the field for Gardner. They're completely standing up. Look at the space. Steven Gardner, Nicholas Vieira's through. And he's missed another chance. My goodness me. We have to be scoring here. I'm going to tell them to push forward. Shishi, ball in. Cleared away again. Uh, this is an absolute onslaught. It's like the Alamo out there. Shishi, ball in for Vera. Can he shoot? He doesn't. Oh my goodness me. Of all the ways to go ahead in this game, it's an Anders Thompson own goal. I mean, I don't care, but my God. <laughs> Come on, guys. You're better than that. Um... Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this. It's great pressure from us so far. We've got them in our pockets so far. Shishi's ball in. Vera has the shot and it just deflects off the defender. And what? it looked like he passed it into his own net there. 1-0 B67. We do need a second goal in this game, though. Um, it is so, so, so important that we go and get that second goal. Rogers, Gardner's got to look over the top. He's found Nicholas Vera. He's through. And he's had another shot saved. This is ridiculous now. Carl Rogers Jr. Bravo. He's got men overlapping. One of them is Nicholas Vera. He's through and it's saved again. Come on. Do you ever get the feeling uh, when you have a game like this and you create all these opportunities and don't score that you just kind of know that it's going to give them a goal any minute now? It, it just feels like that's what's about to happen in this game. We couldn't be playing any better if we... Oh my goodness. How? Like, <laughs> he's got nothing left in the tank, has he? I don't know why they even bother starting him. Shishi over the top for Bravo. He's got Vera in again. Can Vera have a shot? Goes Bravo. Oh, and another shot goes over the bar. Looking long for Gardner. Easily knocked down. Bravo. Gardner. Look across the pitch. There's so much space. Seth and Orr. Into the gap for Muscoots. We need a ball in now. Ball in. Gardner. Holy hell. That is probably the best worst performance I've ever seen in a first half. Um, we, We've created so many opportunities and are only winning because of an own goal. 
This is FM in a nutshell for us. Now, this is going to go one of two ways. Either it will continue like this and they'll grab a late equaliser because that's FM or we'll thump them 5-0 in the second half because the resolve will be broken and they'll have to come at us. Those are my two predictions for the second half. Right, let's have this. They're bringing off Mads Vang, as you would imagine, and Feldbal is coming on, although he's kind of a bit of a tormentor of us in the past. So we do need to be careful about that. Um, but I don't think that's going to mean a... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They've changed formation. They've gone 4-3-3. This is what's going to happen. I swear to God that what I predicted at halftime is what's going to happen now. Um, I think Fremad are winning their game. But I don't think that really matters to us, does it? Uh, Spellman's ball up. It was going to come back to bias. The fact that we didn't score when we were so unbelievably on top, it is unreal. And I really don't know what to do about it, but I think we've got an injury as well. And it's Seth Anor. Oh, good. Perfect. Just what we need from this game is an injury to Seth Anor. And yeah, he, he's, he's pulled his hamstring. Perfect, because that's not a position that we have basically any cover in. Um, we're going to get Ingolfsson on. I'm just going to put him as a central midfielder as well. Oh, no, central midfielder as well, because that's where he plays. And it's best to keep him in a comfortable position for now. Um, this couldn't go any worse right now unless we concede the equaliser, which you just know is coming. And I don't know what to do about it because these 4-3-3 formations, SBO used to play one against us and we kind of ended up with these ding-dong battles against them. Well, you know Ingolfsson's going to shoot as he does. If we can scrape out of here with a 1-0 win, then fine, to be perfectly honest. Uh, right, stuff's got to change. Vera might have got the assist for the own goal, but something has to, something's got to give. Um, Augustin hasn't played that well again. And Nicholas Rowland's going to come in for a little bit. And maybe, 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 no. Hutch, maybe? No, I'm actually content with the strike force for now. I feel like they're going to create... They're going to hopefully keep finding opportunities to get that second goal. Vera, can he find a cross? Dinks it in. Bravo, cleared away. Shishi, and it's wide of the mark again. Oh my goodness me, what is that? Vera. Gardner, saved again. And Helsingor are beating Roskilde. This is... There's never going to be a better chance for us to get a result than today. And you just know it's coming. You know it's coming. Go on, there we go. That's brilliant stuff. Right, just keep it down there or grab the second goal. One of those will do. Shishi, and it's tipped over the bar by Spellman again. Ingolson's ball. Vera! And it's in the back of the net. My God, Nicholas Vera with the goal. How is this only 2-0? We've, I mean, we've huffed and puffed today, but it would send us four points clear at the top of the league, and that is massively important. Look at the space of Vera here just to guide that into the back of the net. Great goal from him. He's been really good for us so far. Phew. I was getting genuinely worried about that Spellman guy in goal. I, I was genuinely starting to think we had Sabrina the Teenage Witch in goal against us. Because it was starting to look that way. Some of the saves they were pulling off. Gardner, through for Bravo, not quite. Jorgensen, up the pitch. We should have this in the bag now at 2-0. 1-0 uh, was always the worry, but Vera's goal has hopefully put the icing on the cake. Um, the icing which should have been loaded on in the first half in much, in much quantities. Garcia's ball over the top. Drop down to the midfield. Oh, he could have slipped in through there, you know. He has now. Ah. And there we go. Full time. Marion List nil. B67 2. On another day, this is probably 7 0. Um, but we've got the result in the end. And Nicholas Vera, man of the match, he got a goal and an assist. He pretty much single handedly won this game and missed loads of chances in the process. Roskilde lost at Helsingor, and Hobro could only draw at home to Vent Sissel. Next game is huge. It's going to be huge. Right, guys, we are back on the day of the game against Hobro. Um, our record against them is pretty damn dismal. In fact, the only result that we have against them that we've won, um, if you exclude the friendly, I suppose, uh, is the one earlier this season at home. Now, this is why this game is so important. I think if we can win this game, it will really give us a great chance at winning this division, basically. And some other good news in a second. So the key thing. Um, I noticed that, of course, with Sethanor out, he's going to be out for three to four weeks, which means the next three or four games, basically. However, um, I noticed we had a guy called Alex Ott, an American that I've been avoiding giving a contract to because I didn't know if we were actually going to need him or not. So I've now taken the plunge and given him a deal. He'll be starting today in the midfield with Shishi. But also, I noticed it would let me give him a longer deal again. I don't know if that's because of the board or the time of year and finances or whatnot, but I used that moment to go and extend the contracts on some players. Most importantly, Mariano Bravo. I've extended his contract because it only went through till December. Now it goes through to June 2025 so we've got him now for another two years at least um which is unbelievable because it means we can get decent money for him if we need to and he's going to be here for a while um and that just pleases me so so much because he's becoming a favorite player of mine already I also extended Carl Rogers Jr's uh contract as well because I feel like he's a good player with a lot with a future here who could hold down that role for many years to come so I want to sort of tie him down as well Gardner's already got a long-term contract and uh yeah everything else is pretty damn solid in those roles for now we can do some more in the summer if the money's still right. So for today's game, it's not going to be an or. It's going to be Alex Ott. Um, I know he isn't particularly fit at the moment, and he certainly isn't going to be playing there. He's a sentiment. 
For today, we're just going to play him as a center mid on support because that's the role he likes to play. We're just going to play him in his comfortable role and hope that he can do something. People did say to put two center mids. I don't really like the idea of having two center mids. Um, particularly, a center mid is kind of a blank one and you can kind of make them do anything you want and I wouldn't know what to do with the guy, to be perfectly honest. Um, so we're just going to go with the default one for now because um, we're only using him in Anor's absence, although I might try some stuff out in other games. On the bench, uh, Cristobal Caliero, another one of the uh, Spanish contingent, uh, Nicholas Roland, Arce, uh, Brennan, who is back, but probably not fit enough to start. And also, I'm really enjoying Vera's performances at the moment. Danny Lopez, due to uh, some changes, Betts is pissed off at me, essentially. Um, Thorstenson and Marion Pamich, who will be leaving. Um, he's already been poached by a Croatian side. They want to put him 700 grand, a uh, 700 pound a week. I ain't doing that. We finally got the revenge one. That's always nice to see. Also, as a total side note, Brendan O'Neill is now being sponsored by Alex Watts over on the Patreon. He was sponsoring Alan Franson, but of course, uh, Franson left us. So now he's the one paying for the treatment of Brendan O'Neill. So hopefully, um, he's well, he seems to have done a good job because Brendan is back and hopefully he can be firing before the end of the season. So thank you for that, Alex. With the sort of system that hobro play it's really much of a muchness uh, as to what we do i think we're going to just try and play our game and hope that we're better than them on the night um i'm going to stop trying to be so reactive and just try to play our game and hope that we're the better side um because that's that's really what we've got to do today we have to prove that we're a better side than hobro if we want to get promoted please don't concede a goal from a set piece though that would be really poor um like if you're going to concede goals that's fine um, but make it not from set pieces don't give them goals for crying out loud hobro's plan appears to be to slow the game down to an almost like glacial speed and then like massively speed it up at times um oh well done rogers there we go gardner has to look over the top mariano bravo through ross gilder are winning their game no surprises there and mariano bravo has given us the lead on 25 minutes and this would be massive because it would start to um eliminate hobro from any potential title challenge to be perfectly honest it would go down to a two horse race i think this is a glorious ball over the top from gardner mariano bravo with his 10th goal of the season already um Probably not going to be top scorer for us, but you never know what's ca what he's capable of over these next few games. Brilliant stuff. And now Perez has a gashed head. Um, should be able to play out the rest of the match. I'm aware of that. And he is playing well. So we'll see how he does. Oh. Um, we'll see how he does with this gashed head. Might have to get him off if his performance is starting to drop as a result of it, perhaps. Great tackle from Ott. Augustine. Perez. Alpha Muscutza. See, now we'd be eight points above Hobro uh, with a win here. Bravo's through again. Takes a touch. Can he score? No, he can't. Rask with the save. We've been excellent so far. Muscutza, brilliant tackle. Got to be careful that he doesn't get himself sent off or something. Vera's well over the top. Gardner's through. Go on, Stevie. You can do it, son. He's all the way through. Oh, my God. What a save that is from the goalkeeper. We should have a second goal here. Now, in the last game, I was kind of down on the fact that we hadn't taken our chances, but it was nothing like, uh, th you know, it was far worse than this. We probably should have made this too, though, when we had the opportunity, um, because Hobber are a much better side and are fully capable of coming back, because at this point, they'd be eight points from us with six games to go. It would basically put it down to a two-horse race, and it would really be ours to lose. Um, getting through this period is so key. I think we do have to play Ross Gilder again, though. Um... I'd like to get in a position where we could lose that and not throw it all away. That's the plan anyway. I am tempted to get Alejandro Perez off uh, because of that injury. I don't want to risk making it worse. And we've got Nicholas Rowland on the bench, who's a perfectly fine central defender. So it makes sense for me for now. Yeah, it might cost us in the end, but I'd rather have Perez fit and firing for the rest of these games rather than losing him and incurring more injuries. Um, they've got a substitution as well, interestingly. Ott, I don't know how well Ott's done today. I haven't actually looked at his rating any time lately. Out, oh, there's so much space out wide. Ott does well. Over the top. My God, Nicholas Vieira is onside. It's three versus three. Just square it. Oh, he's a selfish player. Like someone pointed out, he is a very selfish player and he will try and score those. It's the one player you don't want that falling to. I feel like if that's Bravo, that's either in or he's passing it to someone else. He has two players making runs across there to possibly get on the end of it. And he just doesn't pick out his teammate. Could have wrapped the game up for us there. Very frustrating. Ott again releases Vera. This time he's got to look for a pass. There he goes. Mariano Bravo through again. One touch. Finished. No, not quite. Roskilde 2-0 up in their game. No surprises there. Okay, change is coming soon. And also with Ott, um, his rating is dropping even more. Maybe someone with a bit more experience could be coming in anytime soon. Gardner's running the ball all the way down the pitch himself. Goes from a scoop, sir. Vera's in behind, you know. Go on. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, I understand that you want to score and you're a selfish player, but shooting from that angle is absolutely asinine. Ott with a big tackle there. Actually, one more change we're going to make. This is quite important to me. Vera, he has to come off. Uh, not because he's been super bad, but he's missed chances where he could have squared the ball. And Brendan has got that crossing trait on him. Um, or, you know, things that he likes to do. Those are the sort of positions where Brendan O'Neill probably would have squared that for someone. Uh, to put it in the back of the net. So getting him on, if we're going to get some more of these chances, probably isn't a bad idea. Looking into the channel for Brendan O'Neill. Right, watch this. Will he cross it? He's almost certainly going to cross it. 
Okay, well, he didn't actually cross it, so I'm looking like a bit of a knob here, aren't I? That was the perfect opportunity for Brendan O'Neill to prove me right there and just square that to his teammate who could put that into an empty net. Because once again in this game, we've created more chances than we should have had to. And Bravo's header! Nope, saved off the line again. This really should be she's ball in. Gardner's header! Oh my god, how is this being saved every single time? I think this is going to be it, guys. And there it is, before he even takes the kick. B67-1, Hobro nil. A very, very deserved win. Um, we created a lot of chances today. Actually, they didn't play very well against us at all. I expected them to be much better today. Gardner will probably get man of the match. He played a lot of key passes today. We've got the win that we needed uh, that really does set us up there nicely. Roskilda won their game comfortably. They're still going to push us right towards the end of this, but I feel like it's in our hands if we keep winning games we're going to win the league Whew. and here is that league six games to go four points clear with a better goal difference we're also now eight points above hobro i think that the, the worst we will finish this year would be second and i would be kind of gutted to throw a, away a four point lead in six games but it does depend do we have to play roskilda again yes we do and it is away from home as well Oh, this is getting tight now. So next episode, uh, we've obviously got the final games of the season away at Shellerup and then at home against Vencisl. So that final game of the season against Vencisl could be must win for both teams. Um, but hey, I, there's a lot of teams that I'd much rather not play on the final day of the season than Vencisl. So I, I guess we'll take it. Frem away has to be a win. Roskilda, we've given ourselves an opportunity to be able to lose that and not be too bothered. And then we've actually got three home games of our last four. At home against Freymad, at home against Aarhus, away at Shellerup, and at home to Vencisl. I think we can do it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Will we be going up as champions? Will we be getting into the playoffs? Will we be falling out of the playoffs entirely? That seems a little bit fast-fetched, but I would be interested to like to, for you guys to tell me what you think is going to happen um, in well, the end of the season. Will we be playing in the Super League next year? Whew, if you have enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, it's actually another two clean sheets. We've been getting more clean sheets this season. In our last few games, we've actually got like five clean sheets from our last like, eight games. That's pretty damn good for us. I wonder how we are on the old defensive rankings. We have the second best defense in the league with only 26 goals conceded in 27 games. What a bloody turnaround. And the best attack as well with 59 goals scored so far this year. We might not get our best def best attacking season this year, but we're sure as shit going to get our best defensive season. And that's really what matters. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to the final day of the season where hopefully we can go up, then do drop a like on the video. That would be amazing. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well for more videos like this in your inbox every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the final two games of the season where hopefully we'll be celebrating promotion to the top flight hopefully and then all kinds of problems that come with the summer of that whether we go professional or not whether they let us go professional or not whether that means we lose loads of players as a result whether that means we end up in loads of debt it's a double-edged sword believe me so we'll see how that goes thank you so much for watching Bye bye